Does the idea of being on video with your students make you extremely nervous? Hi, I'm Jennifer with Simply Kinder, and today we're going to talk all about it. I'm going to share with you some tips and tricks. So doing things like reading books or having lessons or just meeting and chatting with your students isn't so scary. Let's go ahead and get started. That being said, I want everybody to just take a deep breath, and that's what I'm doing right here, right now outside with you. It is going to be difficult, but it will get easier the more and more you do it. I would also suggest that every single time before you do a video, you also take that deep breath. Give yourself 10 to 15 minutes where you're just centering yourself, so that way the craziness and the chaos of prepping for going on video with your students isn't carried into your actual lesson. This is probably my number one tip. Find something that will calm you down, sit down, do some deep breathing, go outside, go for a walk, and just really, really, really center yourself. Tip number two seems silly, but it is important. You need to do what you need to do in order to feel more confident. For me, I hardly ever wear makeup and my hair is always up in a Cindy Lou Who bun up on the top. But when I'm doing video, I take the time, I throw on some extra concealer and some lip gloss, and I actually make sure my hair looks great down. So you do what you need to do in order to feel confident because that will come through on your video. Be sure that your device has a full charge and that you have your device plugged in if possible. When making video or streaming things, you will go through your battery super fast. And if it dies, you will lose it all. So make sure that you are plugged in and fully charged. Now you're gonna to wanna to think about the space in your home that you can actually make your videos. You're gonna to wanna to pick somewhere that has great lighting. Let me show you. When I stand here, I have the window in front of me and the wall behind me. But if I put the window behind me, I become darker and harder to see. And so by selecting a space in your home that is well lit, you can really, really, really um, allow your families to see you a whole lot better. I also wanna take a minute to note that you don't necessarily have to set up a space that looks like a classroom in your home. You can do most things that you're gonna to need to do with technology. And so if you are able to make a homey classroom space in your home, that's great. And if not, I bet your students will super appreciate seeing you sitting at your kitchen table or on your couch or in your office or even in a spare bedroom. They're not going to care. And so just do the best that you can with what you have and make it work for you. So now you're ready to set up your device. One tip that I have that will be really helpful for you is to take your device and to put it almost even with your eyes or even a little bit higher and angle it down. You can tell that when I have the device lower than my face, it's going to point up and it's gonna get all the glare from up here and it'll just make it harder for you to be seen. So for this particular shot, for you to see how I set up my computer, I have my phone on a stand above my head and it's angling down. And I have to say, I am so glad you can no longer see my double chin and you can't see up my nose. Let me show you how I set up my computer. So I had my husband get a box um, and he taped it up super tight and we added a few things in it to make it a little bit heavier just to pri provide stability. So now I have my computer on my box and I can easily adjust myself down. I can back myself up. I can go to the side and display things on each side of me. I can pull in closer and it just looks and feels so much better as the person on the video. But how do you do this with your mobile device? Well, there's a few different ways and I'm gonna show them to you now. The first way is kind of like my other way. You just simply take the boxes and you stack them to the height that you need. Now you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you have it on a table. And so what I've been known to do, my family will vouch for this, is I will take a coffee table or an end table and I will literally pick it up and move it where I need it if I need to stack my camera, you know, my boxes to get my camera at a certain spot in my house. And so that's what I've done. On the very top, you're gonna have the smaller box. And so you can just push it forward or push it back and then place your phone right there like that. And it is that simple. Just make sure that the base of the table is sturdy enough that it doesn't accidentally get, get knocked over. 
The reality is though, that there is actual equipment out there that is made to do exactly what you're trying to do. And so we're gonna show some of those devices to you now. And just as a word of warning, these are going to be a lot more stable than you just propping your phone up in a spot and hoping that it doesn't fall down. So if you plan on, learn, on teaching from home um, for a longer period of time, it might be in your best interest to just go ahead and invest in some of these, um, these different things. The first thing that I got, I actually picked up this morning from Target and it's called a Grip Tight 1 GP stand. There are lots of different types and lots of different brands of these. This is just the particular one that they had in stock that I was able to pick up this morning. And so it basically is just a little tripod for your phone. You just twist this on, these fold up so that way um, you can store it away when you're done but the little phone attachment goes there, and then you just slide the phone in, and you now have a stable surface for your phone to sit. Target actually had a couple different options for phone tripods within their electronics department. We found them in both the cell phone aisle and in the camera aisle, so make sure to look in both of those sections. We also found this one that we thought was pretty neat and we wanted to show you because it comes with the remote. Now, I'm not quite sure if the remotes will work with whatever software that you're using, but it definitely can come in handy if you can figure out a way for it to work. And so it's super simple. It just connects with your Bluetooth. One other thing I did want to mention as well is that with these tripods, they are actually super adjustable. So you want to make sure that your phone is centered on the base. And then you might also want to just bend down these little loops so that way you have a little bit more stability. If you keep it up like I did in the other tripod, you run a higher risk of the phone actually falling over. I do have one other cell phone stand that I use that I wanted to show you. Now this is a professional piece of equipment and so it is a little bit pricey, but if you're looking for something that's super adjustable, super easy to use and has a super strong base, it might be worth your sanity to invest in some of this stuff. And so this is a, a, a cell phone stand that has lots of different arm adjustments so that I can move it around and it works exactly the same way as the other ones. You just take and you slide the phone in just like that. Now, a few things when it comes to putting your phones in these stands. You want to be careful that you're not putting the phone, the little, the little clatchy guys, on your volume or your lock screen because that will create you to take hundreds of photos at once or to turn your volume down when you're recording. So just make sure that when you put them in these stands that they have um, no buttons being pushed. Those are some tools that you can use to help yourself feel a little bit more comfortable streaming with a cell phone. But there's also tools that you can use for your desk or for your laptop. This is a stand that I um, have picked up over the years and it allows me to adjust my computer up and down as I need. And so what I love about this is it helps my computer to be flat. So when I'm sitting here, I can type, I can keep my head up, and I can look at the camera. This is, to be honest with you, I showed you all those you know, little tools for your cell phone. Nine times out of 10, when I'm making a video or I'm streaming with educators, I'm doing it right from this computer and I'm stacking my computer most likely on some boxes. But this is another option for you. I don't know about you, but over the years, I've bought lots of work from my couch type devices that would probably work well. I'm thinking of one in particular that I have that I could go grab. It's just a plastic tray that has arms that come down and it just goes over your lap. That would be great to put on a desktop just to provide your, uh, or on a, on a table to provide your computer some stability. Reminds me of, I'm gonna date myself. Reminds me of those metal trays that we used to get when we were kids that had the cartoon characters on them where you'd eat dinner on them. So hopefully you know what those are. If not, um, I just dated myself. But those would also be great tools for right now too, just to help you lift things up a little bit. That being said, there are a few other tips that I wanna share with you that didn't quite fit in in the other parts of the video, and so I'm gonna do that with you now. Tip number one is to always make sure you're looking at your camera. This is extremely hard because you, when you're talking with somebody, you wanna make eye contact with them, but there's nobody behind this camera with me right now. I'm literally in a room 
by myself talking to, in this case, my phone. And so it, be, it can be tricky, but it's important because when I look away from my camera and I'm looking at myself in that video, you don't feel like I'm looking at you and you lose that personal connection. And so that's just a little tip Make sure you look at the camera all the time um, because it, it can just help people feel a little bit more connected to you. And it's super important, especially during this time. One of the things I'll do to help myself remember to look at the camera is I have my friend here and I put her on a stick. This is Crystal from Creative in Life. And she does not know that I'm doing this, but she does know that I have a crystal on a stick and I use her all the time. One of the things that I'll do is I will take her and I will put her behind my computer like this. So that way when I'm looking, I'm looking right here at my friend and we're just having a casual conversation, but her eyes are right by the camera that I'm needing to be looking at in order for people to feel that personal connection. On a phone, it's not so easy because, well, Crystal is almost life-size and she doesn't quite fit on a cell phone. And so one of the things that I'll do when I'm using my cell phone, which I usually don't do, um, is I will put a sticky note right here at the top, right by the camera, so that way I remember to look right there. And it just, it helps me to remember that, oh, bring my eyes back there, bring my eyes back to the camera. So that's tip number one. Tip number two is to make sure that you shut off your notifications for maybe your text messages and your Facebook if you can. Now, I don't, to be honest with you, I don't know how to do this, but I can tell you I've been getting notifications while I'm making all these videos for you and it is kind of distracting and it's kind of annoying. And I just wanna go up and swipe it to get rid of it because it's there. And sometimes they make a little ding sound and it's it doesn't affect my students watching my video, but it affects my attention. And so you might wanna consider just shutting your notifications off if you can figure out how to do that. One of the things that I might do if, if streaming from your phone is your only option or from a mobile or from a device, Personally, I would stream from an iPad if you have one available, and then I would have my phone in my hand available and ready because you might have some families who forgot the link or who can't get in or who this or who that. Um, it just is useful to have a phone right there. Or somebody might ask you a question and you might say, oh, let me grab that or let me do this, and then you have something in your hands if you need it. So that's tip number three to try and have your phone in your hands and use it kind of as a last resort if you can. Tip number four is to is about reading books. And so a little disclaimer, make sure you know what you're doing if you're reading books as far as copyright and permission from your administrator. Um, this part is meant for if you're, if you're reading a book to your class in a private setting. So I just wanted to mention it because I've seen a few people do this and I just want to, um, I just want to note on it a little bit so that way you can be, um, you can have your, your book be seen a little bit better. So I am not in a room with fancy lighting. I do own fancy lighting and I could have showed it to you but I just don't need it in my office. My office has four cans. My husband used to be an electrician, so he put four cans in for me um, You know, whenever we had the lighting put in the room. These cans do enough light for me to get me to be this bright. I've done zero editing to the brightness in this video. And I also showed you too that you can sit in front of a window in order to get the correct lighting um, that you need with your students. But it will be a little tricky if it's overcast because sometimes that will affect your lighting as well. However, I wanted to talk about the books. And so with the books, um, have your phone on landscape when you do your video. Um, I think it's natural to go to portrait because we use our phones in portrait. But for video, and especially I would think for this type of application, it's probably better to have your phone in landscape mode. And part of the reason for that is it allows me to sit here on the left or the right, whatever reverse way I'm coming through to you. And then on the other side, I can put whatever it is that I'm talking about. I've now created this workspace over here for me to show my students. And so with the book, we're used to being able to hold the book open and hold it back and read like this. But from you can tell right there, you can't really see the book from where you're from where you're viewing. And so what I would suggest doing is just give yourself some grace and put the book right here to show and then open it 
and read the page and then go ahead and show the book like this. And you can see I'm over here to the side and I'm just kind of peeking to make sure that it's centered and that people can see the story page. And that'll just make it a little bit easier for your students to see the story that you're reading um, and just some ideas for you to manage it. And then the last tip that I have is just to practice, practice, practice. I cannot stress this enough to you. It will be difficult when you first start because it is foreign and it is new, but the more you do it, the easier it becomes and you might actually end up liking it. Um, it's just one of those things that it's, it's so like intimidating. And so if you practice, you can work through some of those nerves. And I can tell you from doing this that it, it, it takes a while to get used to being able how to use Zoom and being able how to use a Facebook group and being able how to do those things. And so set yourself up, like if it's Facebook, set yourself up a practice group where you can go in and you can practice those things. If you're streaming to Zoom, practice with your teammates, practice with your kids. That's what I did to make our Zoom video is I literally had my own children take a device and go sit in different parts of my house and sent them the link for them to click so I could see what it looks like and I could navigate around and practice. So practice, 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 and you will feel more confident when you are streaming or making videos for your students. And so that brings us to the end. Um, I hope you gained a few tips and tricks. I know some of them seemed a little silly, but in the grand scheme of things, they will help you to feel confident and to feel like you can, you can do this. And let me just say this, you can do this. And it doesn't matter if you have foundation on, and it doesn't matter if your hair is in a Cindy Lou Who bun. Your students just want to see you. They want to hear from you and they want to hear from the other students in their class. Use that to your advantage. I mean, do your video from your kitchen one day. Do your video from your front porch another day. They would get a kick out of seeing a little glimpse into your life and your home because they think that you sleep at school. <laughs> and so um, use it as a way to connect with these, these humans who you've already grown to love and appreciate. And so try and mix some of that in there as well. So this brings us to the end. Please share your tips. We are in a very fluid time right now where things are changing daily and new tips and tricks and ideas are being shared from other people. So please share those within the Simply Kinder community so that way we can all learn from each other and it will just be that much easier for us to be able to um, reach our kids and keep them learning and thriving in the situation that we're in. So. I will see you inside Simply Kinder community and I hope everybody stays well and has a great day. Bye.